Good morning. I'm Gordy Locke, speaking to you live here from South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. Thanks for joining me. It is Tuesday, March 22nd. Um, we experienced a delightful worship yes, or, uh, Sunday at South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church. Pastor Keith shared part two of uh, the message, the power and meaning of the prayer that Jesus taught, or what we uh, commonly call the Lord's Prayer. The message was well received. And helpful as we understand how meaningful that prayer is in our lives. Uh, there's actually five prayers within that prayer. And um, what he talked about was, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And it was interesting how he shared uh, about uh, how we don't think, we just think, you know. And, and the words he says, uh, is it thy, thy and thine will or my and mine will? And a lot of times we pray for things that we want, uh, we feel that we need. And some of those things are very, uh, actually quite relevant and needful. But do we really pray for God's will to be done here on earth? And it was really cool how he brought in, or interesting how he brought in, that uh, those things that God wants to happen here on earth, that we need to pray those in and be be open to whatever it is God would have us to do to make that happen, to be willing to do God's will. So um, it's very, I, I feel very blessed to be part of that service. It was, uh, had a really good uh, children's, children's message. Uh, Phil did a great job of that. And just uh, the worship, the fellowship, uh, it's, it's, it's good to be back. It's good to, to um, worship more freely, it, it feels, and and I'm, I feel blessed. Uh, God, to pray a prayer of offering that we would may be and do what God intended in the beginning. That we may be authentic women, men, and churches. To be as God created us to live. To be a Jesus follower and following him. To bring some heaven to earth through us just like Jesus did. That's what Jesus did. He brought heaven down. Um, I I, I can't remember if we sang this song or not, but heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Uh, One of the songs I remember as a child. Jesus came to earth for a reason, and that was to bring heaven and a glimpse of heaven with him. And how he did that was love. And it's interesting, I was um, speaking with uh, Pastor Keith this past week about love, um, loving on people and making, just bringing the love of God into our lives and living it out. And it's very important. I'll read again. Now, this is just a prayer that we, we speak every Sunday morning in church. And it's important. And I know that Sue shares it um, also on Monday mornings, she she prays the Lord's prayer. I'm gonna. This is gonna be a little different than what we pray together, but it is Matthew six nine through thirteen. I read part of this, or I read a little bit more of this last week. But our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. And today we're going to speak a little bit about temptation, but more, um, I have a personal story I want to share with you. I'm kind of, it's kind of embarrassing, I guess, on my part, but we've all done embarrassing things in our lives. And this is, um, I'm going to entitle it, Pride Comes Before the Fall. And uh, last week my devotional was on humble. And this week, it's going to be on pride. Um, sometimes uh, you could, I guess, look at it as a direct opposite. To be humble or to be prideful or have humility or have pride in our lives. So uh, pride today, I'm going to give you the definition in uh, Daniel Webster's dictionary. An inordinate self-esteem or conceit. Uh, speaking for myself, I could think of several things that I've done in my life 
where pride has actually caused me a lot of pain, and I have suffered many embarrassing consequences. As many of you know, I enlisted in the uh, Air Force right after high school and started my career as a high-voltage lineman. Got some really good training in the Air Force, and while I was in advanced training at Shepard Air Force Base, which is in northern Texas, I, I suffered from a pride debacle. I have a little smile on my face, but it really wasn't that fun. Um, I learned how to climb utility poles about a year earlier, so I knew what I was doing. It wasn't new to me, and was now trained to do high voltage um, with fiberglass sticks, or they call them hot sticks, where you actually isolate yourself from the high voltage wires with sticks, and actually they become your hands. Uh, these sticks, so many things you can do with them to keep away from the high voltage. Um, it was a cool Texas morning in May of 1979. Uh, there was four of us airmen that climbed up poles side by side. And we had a simple task. We had to climb up 26 feet and disconnect a neutral wire, and we call float it. And then we had other work to do, but we all went up, and um, right off the bat, <laughs> I, I, I must admit, pride kicked in. I looked around. This is one of the first days of training. I remember that. And I looked, uh, you know, both ways, and there was three other linemen on, or, you know, I believe they're all airmen on poles, and we're climbing up together. And I'm trying to assess their climbing abilities. I'm lo looking at both sides and going, hmm. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm a better climber than any of these guys. So, pride got a hold of me, and I climbed up 26 feet, disconnected the neutral, and our sergeant on the ground said, come on down, guys. So, in my brain, my 20-year-old brain, I said, yep, I'm a better climber than these guys. I'll be the first one on the ground. I believe I took two steps with gaffs, these things you wear on your feet that um, they're spikes, they bite into the pole. Took two steps, I gaffed out, and I fell, I free fell. We were climbing by hand. We didn't have a belt around the pole or anything. I free fell through the air, 20 some feet, landed flat on my back, and <laughs> Immediately, they called the ambulance, and back then we called it the meat wagon, <laughs> which, yeah, I was, uh, I was not feeling too good. Um, they hauled me off, and needless to say, I was the first one on the ground, but not the way I had planned. My pride had gotten a hold of me, and then I fell. Uh, it was... Uh, Took me to the hospital, uh, did a lot of x-rays, examination, and uh, nothing was broken, but I will admit that my pride was very hurt. And coming back, climbing the next day, I know I remember I had to climb the next day, I was petrified. But along with that, a lot of ribbing, a lot of jokes about me and nicknames and everything else that comes because of me, because of my pride. and. I learned from that debacle, that pride, I'll call it a pride debacle, and was much more careful in the future. And I watched myself and I realized that pride wasn't the way to go. Uh, I'm going to read from Proverbs about pride. How much better to get wisdom than gold and to get insight rather than silver? Proverbs 16, 16 through 18. The highway of the upright avoids evil. Those who guard their ways preserve their lives. Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall. And at 20 years old, I learned that pride was not my friend. Pride would get me into a lot of trouble. Unfortunately, there's a few other things in my life that pride got me into trouble again. And I don't know if, I'm, if I'll share them with you, but they were also quite embarrassing. Jesus was tempted, so he knows he knew what it was like to be tempted to be prideful by Satan, just like we are. 
So Jesus experienced a lot of these opportunities to have pride in his life. Um, in Matthew, it, it speaks about Matthew 4, 1 through 11, how Jesus went, he had fasted. I'll, I'll read the scripture to you. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be, to be tempted by the devil. That's why he went out there. He had, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up in a holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands. Satan tempted Jesus to sin, to have that pride, to just do something that would (laughs) show his pride. And this was Jesus' response. Um, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this will give, all this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Proverbs is a book of wisdom, and it's one of my favorites. There's a lot of wisdom there, and I'm very thankful for the word of God. Uh, And also in Proverbs 11, 1 through 3, this is in the Amplified Bible. For those of you who have ever read it, it kind of expands gives you a lot more words to think about. Um, a false balance and a dis, this Proverbs 11, 1 through 3 amplified. A false balance and dishonest business practices are extremely offensive to the Lord, but an accurate scale is his delight. When pride comes, boiling up with arrogant attitude of self-importance. I like that. When pride comes, boiling up with an arrogant attitude of self-importance. That's what pride is. We just think that we're important. And I showed that, or I tried to show that I was important. I was the best lineman there. And pride got up in my, in my head. And as a 20-year-old, I acted out. And it hurt. And it caused pain, and it caused fear in my life um, that I would fall again. So these things work against us. Pride works against us. So when we we... Listen to the devil like Jesus didn't. He was our great example. When we listen to the devil and we allow pride to rule us or to move us or to motivate us, then we'll pay the consequences. When pride comes boiling up with an arrogant attitude of self-importance, then come dishonor and shame. But with the humble, the teachable, who have been chiseled by trial and have learned to walk humbly with God, There is wisdom and soundness of mind. The integrity and moral courage of the upright will guide them. But the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. That that crookedness that we can get into is treacherous and it destroys us. That pride can destroy us. There's things going on right now in the world. Uh, World leaders, their, their pride, their arrogance. Um, it brings wars. It brings, it brings a lot of bad things into the world. There's those in the, those in the business world that have all that arrogance and pride that works against them and is detrimental. Um, pride is something I've struggled with um, a lot of my life. And it's not godly. It's not from God. And it's not healthy. And it's just something, something that God's working at in my life and there's other things in, in other people's lives that God wants to help us, help us to do better at. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this time together. I thank you, Lord, for your help. Holy Spirit, help us with those things that we struggle with. Um, lead us, guide us, um, direct us, teach us. And 
Uh, we thank you for this time together. Thank you for each and every listener. Pray your blessings on them and just pray for a good week. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I want to invite you all, all you adults out there, 18 and up, uh, we are going to have a fun game night here uh, in our um, fellowship hall this Friday night. Bring a fun game to play. Uh, we're going to have snacks, and uh, we're just going to have a good time. It is uh, at 6.30 Friday night, the 25th. Uh, ask you to come along and just enjoy yourself. Even if you don't like to play games, uh, you can maybe walk, walk around watch others play games in fellowship and just enjoy each other's company. So with that being said, uh, spring has sprung, it appears. Uh, the buds are coming out of the trees. I'm looking across the street. Uh, there's a weeping willows there, trees, and they're starting. Their buds are actually coming out, and they're usually the first to come out. So it's pretty neat to see them. So have a blessed week.